Hello and welcome to the demo for SSMS Deploy. Uh, my name is Donald Halloran. I'm the author of this add-in, uh, which is an add-in for Management Studio 2008 uh, to help you with your SQL project management and script deployment. It does a few things. It makes sure that when developers submit requests for deployment, uh, that they're executed according to the life cycle that the developer needs it to be done against, so a test system and then a production system, and that a sign-off occurs at each phase. It prevents the scripts from changing between phases of a lifecycle uh, because it takes ownership of the script and stores it down in a SQL 2008 database. You will need a 2008 instance somewhere uh, just for the functionality of the add-in, but you don't. You can deploy against other versions as well. It keeps a history of what's been done and by who and when and why and how with the results and the errors so you can go back and audit what was done or just search on certain executions if someone was wondering was this done or wasn't it. Um, and it streamlines it all into SSMS itself which is great because I spend all my time in SSMS as a DBA and uh, I hate going through email for anything, uh, particularly deployment requests. They get lost very easily and it's hard to keep track of them or uh, be sure of exactly what's going on. It's written on top of a wrapper which I also wrote and the source code for that wrapper is on my blog at sqlservicecentral.com. I'll put a link in the video description for that. It's just there to encapsulate some of the nastiness of trying to write an SSMS add-in which is not officially supported by Microsoft but is possible. Uh, it's a bit arcane and uh, rather than deal with that the whole time I thought of making a little add-in might help or a little uh, wrapper. So let's have a look at SSMS deploy. Here's the list of requests. This is the main screen for SSMS Deploy. All of your actions run off here, off this context menu. By default, it will show you the requests that have some action that needs to be done, which is the filter status, any open. Uh, an action could be a deployment or a sign-off, basically. You could also ask for the other ones, which would be the completed ones, the cancelled ones, and the failed ones. And you can also get more specific. I'm going to ask for anything because I want to show you the pretty color bar that grows as you, this bar will grow as you move through the deployment life cycle and it will turn red if it, you enter a, a problematic phase or a problematic status. So failed, for instance, goes red, canceled goes red and these things you can't do anything against anymore. To, uh, to rerun this, a new request has to be submitted. Similarly, it's, it's context sensitive so you, you can't complete, you can't do anything with a complete one uh, you can only deploy a queued one, you can't sign it off. Let's make a new request uh, with a uh, project name and a reference number, which you don't need to put in, but they're you know, clearly useful things to put in for searching and auditing. And what I'm putting in here are the lifecycle servers. So this would be, say, the test server, and that would be the production server. Uh, I'm the developer here creating my request with the service that I want it done against, and I'm going to open a file little batch test file with the script in there ID 31 so now this is queued nothing's been done yet let's have a quick look at that there's the details of it so two steps the first one's deployable and the second one isn't because the first one hasn't been done yet I can look at this script in management studio uh, and I can see there's a, a wait in here and the reason I put that in there is just so I can run this deployment now against the first target using either a Windows or a SQL account. Run that deployment and it's running but it's running in the background in a background thread so you can come in and keep doing whatever you want to do in Management Studio in the meantime. You don't just have to sit and wait. And while we're doing that, well, well we've done it. Here's my results and errors. This will get limited to 8,000 characters, so don't put a lot of output in here. Don't actually output data like I have uh, in here. This is really just for your messages. You can do print statements or raise error 10, nothing higher than that because anything higher will be an error. Uh, really, if you want to output data, put it in your script and have it write out to another database or another table. Uh, because there were no errors, SQL Deploy assumes that was successful and moves it to the next phase, which is sign-off required. In the meantime, let's actually have a look at this uh, this script the developer can wait, or the user can wait. Uh, what we do here is add a header and a footer to the script. So the actual file only contained this much. 
and the add-in writes in this header and footer for two reasons. First of all, we want to be able to make sure that our script entirely succeeds or fails, you know, standard ACID principles. But scripts could have multiple batches in them, and you can't, say, try catch around that, for instance. So rather than try that, we go into SQL command mode, and we use a combination of on error exit, uh, exact abort on, and begin tran. And by putting those three uh, in the SSMS deploy, can ensure that this completely succeeds or fails. The second reason is that, as you can see, I can open that script from SQL from uh, SSMS deploy and show it in in Management Studio as a query. And if you ran this in Management Studio as a query, uh, you would violate the deployment control. You'd violate the lifecycle because now you've deployed it, for instance, if you happen to be on the right server. And the add-in won't know that you've done that. Um, but if I was to try and run this here, that's actually going to fail because I'm not in SQL command mode. So there's just a little safety check. I could go into SQL command mode like that and I could then come in here and say set no exec off because that's another little safety check in here and now if I was to run it I'd actually be deploying it so I'm not going to do that but you have to be quite deliberate about that and uh, all I can really do is uh, prevent you from accidentally doing things you probably would don't want to do so we're waiting for a sign off so the developer will come in here after he's talked to his user and the user said everything was okay, so he's going to come and put his signature in and sign that deployment. So he moved up a little further into another queued status because this one's now complete and makes this next step deployable. And I can come in and look at my results again if I want to. So now I'm DBA and I see, oh, look, another one. This is queued again. Gee, they're working fast on this one. So, uh,. I might actually open that and look at the output again and go, hmm, actually I don't like that very much. I'm going to cancel it. As the DBA, I might say I don't like the output. I, I don't like what happened, even though there were no errors. doesn't look right. And really just because I'm uh, control freak. And I can cancel your request. So there, it's done. And uh, that will have to be resubmitted now as a new request. Let's run another deployment. Let's just make a new window here. And I'm in the middle of doing that, but this isn't the window I wanted. That's okay. No big deal. It will remember what I was entering there. So I'll get the script from the current window. And this script has a problem. It tries to create the same table twice in the same database. So that's, that won't work. But I'm going to try and run it just to see what SQL uh, what the add-in will do and it runs and it has errors and because there's some errors here it knows that it or it assumes that that's a failure and it will automatically set that one to failed so there you go that's uh, SSMS deploy my name is Don Halloran and you can find the source code and more information about this add-in at my blog at SQL Service Central thanks very much